door He's a tugboat and a friendly tugboat too Pushing and a pulling in the great big harbor In the great big world is so much fun So many brand new things to discover Waking with the sun, gotta get the job done Oh, Theodore and Emily Vote up Hank and George and the harbor master too Excuse me. Oh, I didn't get very much sleep last night, so I'm kind of tired. Actually, I didn't get any sleep at all last night. No, I was up all night watching ships. Oh, yes. Work goes on here in the big harbor at night, too. Sometimes the tugs have to work all night long. It's called the, the night shift. Yeah, but oh, at night, the harbor is a different place. A special world with its own sights and sounds. Theodore and Hank. We found out about that the first time they worked the night shift. The tugboats were gathered as usual for their morning meeting. Everyone grew quiet as the dispatcher began to give out the jobs for the day. On this day, however, there was less work than usual. You mean we could have the day off? Asked Fodak. Now it is a rare day when the tugs aren't needed, but it does happen. No tugs are required at the moment, said the dispatcher. But I will need someone to work all night tonight on the night shift. The dispatcher looked directly at Emily and George. Any volunteers? He said. I'd like to, began George. But I have an appointment to have my oil changed. Emily also had to say no. Tonight, I'm getting a new tow rope. Theodore had never worked the night shift before. That job always seemed to go to the bigger tugs. He had always thought that staying up all night to work the night shift would be fun and exciting. Well, maybe this is my chance, he thought as he floated forward. I'll work the night shift, sir, he said. Thank you, Theodore, said the dispatcher. But I don't think you're strong enough yet to move Owen the oil rig across the harbor. So that's the job for tonight, thought Theodore. It made sense to move the giant oil rig at night when few ships would be crossing the harbor. And Theodore knew the dispatcher was right. He couldn't do it by himself. Hank moved forward. I could help, he said. The dispatcher looked thoughtful for a moment. Will the dispatcher really let us do the job? Wondered the two smallest tugs. Very well, said the dispatcher. Hank and Theodore will work the night shift. <laughs> Hank and Theodore were so thrilled, they couldn't help but toot their whistles. Let me give you some good advice, said Fodak. Try and get a good afternoon nap. Oh, we will, said Hank and Theodore together. Well, they tried to sleep, but it wasn't easy. As usual, the harbor was very busy and very noisy. Hank, said Theodore, are you awake? I'm awake, replied Hank. Are you awake? I wonder what it's like on the night shift, Hank asked Theodore. Will we be all alone? Will it be too dark to see? I don't know, said Theodore, but I have a question. Well, what's that? asked Hank. How can anyone sleep during the day, said Theodore. At that moment, Northumberland submarine floated slowly by the dock. Hi, Northumberland, called Theodore. Oh, hello there, Theodore. How are you? How are you? Well, the tugs knew Northumberland was a very sleepy submarine. 
But this time, he had fallen fast asleep right in the middle of a sentence. Northumberland is the sleepiest ship I've ever seen, said Hank. At least someone can sleep during the day, smiled Theodore, and both tugs laughed. That evening, as the sun set and the light changed from gold to orange to dark blue, the two tugs sailed out to meet Owen the oil rig. They passed Philip and Fillmore, the ferry twins, as they finished their last trip of the day. They met Rebecca, the research vessel, heading home for the night. Theodore and I are working the night shift, called Hank proudly. Watch out for shooting stars, called Rebecca as she settled into her dock. Shooting stars, said Hank. I hope they don't land on us. I don't think shooting stars are dangerous, said Theodore, laughing. As the darkness deepened, Theodore and Hank began to notice a change in the harbor. It sure is quiet, said Hank. And dark, added Theodore. Owen should be around here somewhere. Owen, called Hank, but his voice was barely a whisper. And there was no reply. How are we ever going to move an oil rig in the dark, said Theodore. He was beginning to worry. Maybe they weren't ready for the night shift. Hank called a bit louder. Owen! The sound seemed to echo all around the harbor. Now both tugs began to get nervous. Hadn't the dispatcher said they would find Owen here? Suddenly, the lights of the great oil rig snapped on. Hello, boys! called Owen in a cheerful voice. I'm all set. Let's get moving. At least now we won't have any trouble seeing, said Theodore, who was dazzled by Owen's bright lights. The two tugs buttoned their tow ropes onto Owen and slowly began to move the oil rig across the harbor. I think I can see why the dispatcher wanted Owen moved at night, said Theodore as he strained at his tow rope. Of course, said Owen. It's because I take up so much room. You would block the ferry boat, said Hank. And all the other ships, added Theodore. But at night, the harbor's empty. Well, almost empty, said Owen. There's probably more going on than you think. Do you like working at night? Hank asked Owen. I love it, boomed Owen in a loud voice. It's so peaceful and quiet. You can hear the waves lapping against the shore, shouted Owen. Well, all I can hear is Owen, whispered Theodore to Hank. And they both smiled. Well, by the end of the trip, the two tugs were very tired. Owen was the heaviest thing they'd ever pulled. And Owen was grateful. Thanks, boys, he shouted. Now, why don't you go off and see the sights? I think you'll find things seem a bit different at night. Okay, Owen, said Theodore. We will. And the two tugs headed off on their own. See the sights, said Egg. What can we see at night? The stars, for one thing, answered Theodore, gazing at the sky. I've never seen so many stars, said Hank. I bet there must be two stars for every fish in the ocean, said Theodore. What was that, said Hank. That, said Theodore, in amazement, was a shooting star. As the two tugs continued to stare happily up at the night sky, they didn't notice the water around them begin to swell and swirl. Hey, cried Hank suddenly. Why is the water so churned up? There's no storm, said Theodore. The sky is still clear. The rough water grew smooth once more. The two tugs were puzzled and they felt a bit uneasy. But Theodore, where did those big waves come from? Asked Hank. There are no ships out here except us, said Theodore. Then they saw it. It was like a shadow moving silently in the dark. And then it was gone. Did you see it, Theodore? Whispered Hank. I saw something, said Theodore. But I don't know what. After seeing that strange shadow, the night felt 
colder, and the light of the stars seemed distant and strange. Theodore and Hank turned and rushed back to Owen. The tugs were eager to tell Owen about the mysterious shadow loose in the harbor. It made waves so big I thought there was a storm, said Hank. And then it just disappeared, added Theodore. Well, as Owen listened to their story, he started to smile. And then he laughed. Yeah, sometimes things look a little different on the night shift, he told them. But I don't think you have to worry. Theodore and Hank found Owen's words a bit strange, but they did feel better under the lights of the giant oil rig. Well, maybe the shadow had only been a dream. It's not long until dawn, boys, said Owen. I guess you'll be getting back to your dock now. Thanks again. You did a fine job. Theodore and Hank said goodbye to Owen and headed for home. Owen's words of thanks cut through the chill air and warmed the tugs from the inside out. They still felt sore and tired, but they were proud of the big job they'd done. Do you think maybe we fell asleep and dreamed about the shadow? Hank asked Theodore. Maybe, said Theodore. But I've never heard of two tugs having the same dream at the same time before. They were so tired that it took a few moments for them to notice the change in the water around them. Theodore, shouted Hank, it's happening again. Quick, this way, said Theodore. And the two tugs turned and sailed off. They were in such a rush they almost ran aground against the cargo sheds. As they turned around, they saw the shadow. We're trapped, said Hank. Hank, said Theodore. Look, I can't, said Hank, and he waited for the worst. But nothing happened. Then Hank heard Theodore say, You, you look, you look different. Hank wondered who Theodore was talking to, so he opened his eyes. And there was Northumberland submarine. Theodore and Hank stared at the submarine floating in front of them. He did look different. He was wide awake. Hello, Hank, Theodore, said Northumberland submarine. I heard you were working the night shift. Isn't it a beautiful night? The tugs were so happy to discover their mystery shadow was a friend that they laughed and, and shouted and, and raced their engines until several voices called from the shore. Keep it down! We're trying to sleep! But you don't seem so... so... Theodore struggled for the right word. Sleepy, said Hank. Northumberland laughed. I know, I know, he said. But you must remember, I do most of my work in the dark. So, what have you two been up to? Theodore and Hank proudly told Northumberland about their first night shift. But we need some sleep now, said Theodore. Oh, you can't sleep yet, said the submarine. Oh, no, you'll miss the best part of the night. What's that? asked Hank. I'll show you, said Northumberland. Follow me. And they all sailed off together to watch the sun rise over the big harbor. Wow, said Hank as he watched the colors flood the horizon. It's even better than the sunset. It's wonderful. Northumberland was right. Watching the sunrise was the best part of the night shift. At the great ocean dock the next day, the other tugboats tried to get Theodore and Hank to talk about their night shift adventure. But they got no answers from the two tugs. Theodore and Hank slept all morning. George couldn't understand how anyone can sleep during the day. Theodore and Hank knew the secret. If you want to sleep all day, uh, just tow an oil rig all night. Uh, or keep watch over the big harbor like I just did. Well, thanks for visiting us here in the big harbor. Oh, and um, we'll see you all again next time. Good night. I mean, so long. Theodore. There's another story coming right up. And you can always learn more about Theodore Tugboat on the internet. Find us through PBS Online. Pushing and a pulling in the great big harbor. In the great big world is so much fun. So many brand new things to discover. Waking with the sun, gotta get the job done. Oh, Theodore and Emily. 
Boat up Hank and George and the harbor master too. Hello. I'm trying to reach the dispatcher down in the harbor, but this radio is sounding very fuzzy. I wonder what Captain Jerome would do. See, Captain Jerome was my old sea captain. And he did everything perfectly. He'd probably just turn it like this. No, it's right, still fuzzy. <laughs> you know what Captain Jerome would do? He'd probably pick it up and give it a good shake like this. Oh, now I can't hear anything. I wonder if I broke it. Oh, and Captain Jerome always did everything so perfectly. Of course, I know what Theodore would say about being perfect. You see, not long ago, Benjamin Bridge started snoring. Oh, and then Rebecca started. Maybe I better begin at the beginning. It was a sleepy summer evening in the big harbor. Not a boat or bell buoy or barnacle was stirring. Everything was calm and cool and quiet. Except there was one little sound. A small buzzing bee kind of sound. And then it grew to be a big wood sawing noise. Until finally it was a giant anchor rattling harbor rocking roar. Benjamin Bridge was snoring. It was the loudest snoring you ever heard. Now, right below Benjamin is the Oceanic Institute, and that's where Rebecca, the research vessel, lives. Benjamin was snoring so loudly, Rebecca couldn't sleep. The next morning, Theodore was waiting for Rebecca with Shelburne, the giant sea barge. Rebecca was going to take them underwater exploring. Here she comes, shouted Theodore. Good morning, he whistled to Rebecca. But Rebecca didn't look like it was a good morning. You see, she was feeling tired because Benjamin Bridge had kept her up all night with his loud snoring. Where are we going today? asked Shelburne in his slow kind of voice. Oh. Someplace, replied Rebecca sleepily. Someplace, Theodore repeated to Shelburne. Theodore was a little puzzled. Rebecca was always so cheerful. But today she seemed, well, kind of grumpy. Rebecca led them to a small island they had never seen before, just outside the big harbor. What are we looking for? asked Shelburne. <sighs> Something, Rebecca yawned again. Something special, I bet, Theodore whispered to Shelburne. Rebecca always finds special things. Well, Theodore was so enthusiastic, Rebecca quickly forgot how tired and grumpy she was. Long, long ago, she explained, this island was almost all underwater, and ships couldn't see it. A lot of ships bumped into it and sank. Maybe some of their things are still down there. Rebecca, smiled Theodore, you know everything. Just then, Rebecca's special equipment told her they'd found something. Look, right under here, she ordered. She moved out of the way and Theodore pushed Shelburne into position. The big barge lowered his dredge to scoop up treasure from the bottom. Shelburne was working very slowly, like he usually did. Shelburne, said Theodore impatiently, can you please hurry up? Oh, it's a nice day, smiled Rebecca. No big hurry. No big hurry, Shelburne, Theodore smiled, just like Rebecca. It is a nice day. Mm -hmm. 
down on the bottom of the ocean, Shelburne's dredge hit something. He caught it. And brought up a wonderful old ship's bell. Well, everyone let out excited whistles. Rebecca, said Theodore, that was really great. A little later, everyone headed home. Rebecca turned for her dock, tooting a little tune. Goodbye. Theodore tooted a tune to say goodbye on his whistle, just the same as Rebecca had done. Rebecca sure is nice, said Shelburne. Nice, smiled Theodore. Rebecca is perfect. That evening, everything was calm and cool and quiet, except there was one little sound. Near Rebecca's dock, Benjamin Bridge was snoring again. He was snoring so loud he was shaking and shuddering from one shore to the other. Every time Rebecca thought Benjamin had finally stopped snoring, out came the most enormous snore of all. Rebecca knew it was going to be a very long, loud, snorry night. Well, the following morning was foggy and soggy in the big harbor. Theodore and Shelburne were waiting for Rebecca to go exploring again. When Theodore saw Rebecca, he blew his cheeriest, good morning, whistle. Not so loud, grumbled Rebecca. You see, she hadn't slept one bit again, on account of Benjamin's snoring. And now, she was really tired, and really grumpy. Theodore was really surprised. I mean, he couldn't ever remember Rebecca sounding so grumpy before. Is everything old? Asked Shelburne slowly. Let's just get to work, frowned Rebecca. Yeah, let's just get to work, Theodore frowned at Shelburne, just like Rebecca. What are we looking for today? said Shelburne. But Rebecca didn't seem to hear him. What are we looking for? Shelburne repeated a little louder. Shelburne, said Rebecca, stop shouting. Shelburne was lowering his dredge slowly, very slowly into the water. And don't creak so loud, added Rebecca. Everything today seemed to upset her. Don't creak so loud, Shelburne, repeated Theodore. Theodore didn't really know why Rebecca was so upset, but if she was upset, he decided to be upset too. Shelburne began to lower his dredge even slower. I found something, said Shelburne quietly. Shelburne's dredge had hit something on the bottom of the harbor. Now he tried to raise it up, slowly. seemed to take forever, and all Rebecca wanted to do was go back to her dock to sleep. Shelburne, she shouted, hurry up, I don't have all day. But of course, Shelburne couldn't go any faster. Theodore honked at Shelburne. Shelburne, he shouted, hurry up. Well, Shelburne was so upset at all the, the shouting and the honking that he gave his line a jerk, and it snapped. I think, said Shelburne, I broke my cable.
pulled Shelburne to the repair dock and headed home following Rebecca. No one said a word for what seemed like a very long time. Well, why did you do that? Rebecca said suddenly. For a moment, Theodore wasn't sure Rebecca was talking to him. Do what? He asked. Well, why did you shout at Shelburne? Asked Rebecca. This time, Theodore didn't say anything for a moment. You do that, he said finally. Now it was Rebecca's turn to look surprised. Yes, I guess I did, she said slowly. I don't know why I shouted at Shelburne, she added. But, said Theodore slowly, I thought you knew everything, Rebecca. Rebecca turned to Theodore. I do know one thing, she said softly. Well, what's that, said Theodore. I know I should apologize to you. I'm kind of tired and grumpy today. Benjamin kept me up all night with his snoring. But you're the one who did the shouting, said Theodore. Yes, said Rebecca slowly. You're right, Theodore. I'm the one who did the shouting, and I'm sorry. Well, suddenly everything seemed kind of turned upside down to Theodore. Like the water was dry, and like the sky was wet, and like he was bigger than Rebecca. Rebecca, he said at last. Yes? It's okay. Nobody's perfect. For the first time that day, Rebecca smiled. Thanks, Theodore, she said. I'll remember that. But what am I going to do about Benjamin snoring? Theodore had an idea. I think, he said, that old ship's bell we found the other day is just the thing. It is, said Rebecca. If we tied it on to Benjamin, explained Theodore, then every time he snores and shakes, the bell will ring and wake him up. That's a perfect idea, said Rebecca. It's not perfect, grinned Theodore, but it just might work. What am I going to do with this radio? You know, maybe Captain Jerome would have taken his radio and given it a good shake to clear away the fuzz. But I think I have a better idea. I'm just going to put it back in its place here like this, turn it off, and just let it rest for a moment. Thanks for visiting us here in the Big Harbor. We'll see you all again next time. Ah, look at that. Huh? It works, and no fuzz. And now I can call the dispatcher. Oops. I forgot what I was going to say. Well, nobody's perfect. Theodore. There's another story coming right up. And you can always learn more about Theodore Tugboat on the internet. Find us through PBS Online. Pushing and a pulling in the great big harbor. In the great big world is so much fun. So many brand new things to discover. Waking with the sun, gotta get the job done. Oh, Theodore and Emily. Vote up Hank and George and the Harbor Master too. Oh, hello. I've decided that tonight I will have a sleepover in my office. Yep, I've got cookies and hot cocoa for a midnight snack. And I can read my maps. I can look at these maps and remember all the wonderful places that I've sailed to. Oh. And I can look at the stars through my binoculars. Ah, beautiful. Oh, oh, boy. Oh, this is very special. I like to do this every night. Oh, and there are the tugboats. They're getting ready to go to sleep. Oh, there's Hank. You know, Hank had a little adventure one night. Have I ever told you that story? Early one morning, all the tugboats were asleep. All the tugboats, that is, but one. Hank was up. It was time for his special job for the week. Each morning, as soon as the sun woke up, 
Hank collected old bumpers from around the harbor and took them to Shediac, the shipyard shed. Morning, Hank, called Shediac as soon as he saw the tug. Shediac looked forward to seeing Hank just as much as Hank looked forward to seeing him. Good morning, smiled Hank. Plenty of old bumpers today. I have plenty of new ones for you, said Shediac. You see, Hank brought Shediac all the old worn out bumpers from the tugs in the docks. And Shediac gave Hank the new ones in their place. It wasn't the biggest job in the big harbor. But to Hank, it was very important. We better get started, said Hank, moving into position to unload his bumpers. Aye, aye, Hank, said Shediac. Hank smiled. It was funny, but he always felt just a little bit bigger whenever he supplied the ship shed. Hank was coming home from work later that day. Theodore looked like he was leaving the harbor. Where are you going, Theodore? called Hank. Oh, I'm going to see Owen, replied Theodore. He explained that his job that week was checking the anchor cable of Owen, the giant oil rig. Owen was working outside the harbor. Boy, that must be fun, said Hank. Theodore knew that Hank had never been out on the ocean before. He had an idea. Well, maybe you could come with me, he said. Do you really think I could, said Hank. Well, we could ask the dispatcher, smiled Theodore. Do you think we could ask him right now? Well, the dispatcher listened carefully to Theodore's idea. Then he turned to Hank. I think it would be fine, Hank, he began. Theodore has a job to do, so try not to get in the way. Oh, no, sir, said Hank. Oh, I'll stay out of the way and oh, it will be fine. Hank tried to look as serious as possible as he set off from the dock. Oh, and Hank? Called the dispatcher. Yes, sir, said Hank. Have fun said the dispatcher with a big smile on his voice. Yes, sir, tooted Hank. The lights of the big harbor were just coming on as Hank set off with Theodore to visit Owen. It was his first time out on the ocean, and he was already having fun. Soon, the two tugs were floating into the wide, open ocean waters. It's dark out here. Hank said softly. Look up there, Hank, said Theodore. Hank looked up into the sky. Ooh, he breathed. It's the most beautiful sight I've ever seen. Far from the lights of the harbor, millions of stars shone down on the tugs with a, a magical glow. The tugboats turned off their engines and just drifted for a moment. It's like we're the only boats in the whole world, said Hank. It's so quiet, Theodore whispered. Just then, giant lights blazed on all around them. Just what I love about it too, a big voice roared. So nice and peaceful. Sure enough, it was Owen. Hank and Theodore grinned. It wasn't peaceful anywhere Owen was. Isn't this a Jim Dandy evening? Yes, sirree, Bob, Owen blared on. You see, Owen is a very noisy oil rig. Well, looky here, Owen hollered. If it isn't Hank. Hi, Owen, Hank called up. This calls for a special story, shouted Owen. The big rig began to tell the tugs all about the time a giant sea cabbage got sucked right up in his drill and gave him cauliflower ears. Owen never told me this story before. Hank felt special being out on the ocean with Big Owen and Theodore. It was, it was just like being an ocean tug. Everyone hush, Owen suddenly thundered. Northumberland's coming. Sure enough, Northumberland submarine was cruising by, about to begin his nightly underwater ocean patrol. Northumberland kinda likes it quiet, Owen bellowed in a voice so loud it rattled Hank's anchor. Northumberland? Owen roared on. We've a special guest tonight. Hank's here. Hank looked around. Northumberland had disappeared. Then, just as suddenly, the sub popped up behind him, just as if Northumberland was playing a game. He dived again. to guess 
guess where the sub would pop up next. Over here, Hank, smiled Theodore. No, over here, shouted Owen. Splash! Northumberland bobbed up like a great big bar of soap in the water. Hank laughed out loud. Hank? A voice called out from the dark. What are you doing out here? It was Constance, the Coast Guard ship. The, the dispatcher said I could come, said Hank, a little nervous. He's fine, bellowed Owen. A little loud, though. Everyone, please turn off your lights, continued Constance. Hank, you come with me. Hank followed along behind Constance. His engine was beating so loudly, he was sure they could hear him all the way back to the big harbor. Oh, he hoped he hadn't done something wrong. Constance turned on her powerful Coast Guard searchlight. It was aimed up at the sky. Do you see those stars there that look like a big soup spoon? Uh-huh, replied Hank. They call those the Big Dipper, Constance continued. If you ever get lost out here, just follow the spoon home. Wow, said Hank, still staring at the sky. Time to get to work, boomed Owen. You better move back, Hank, called Theodore. Hank moved away, and Theodore began checking and moving Owen's enormous anchor cables. Well, Hank's smile felt like it was frozen on his face all the way home. Can we visit Owen again tomorrow night, Theodore? He said. Maybe. Theodore smiled sleepily. Hank couldn't wait. Bright and early the next morning, all the tugs were ready to begin the new day. All the tugs, that is, except one. Hank was so excited about visiting Owen again, he hadn't slept all night. Hank slept in. And by the time he finally woke up, it was too late to collect old bumpers for Shediac. Oh. I'll bring you those bumpers tomorrow, he called, or, or, or maybe the day after. I'll be here, Hank, Shediac called back. He missed Hank's visit, and to tell you the truth, Hank missed visiting Shediac. But right now, all Hank could really think about was visiting Owen again. He couldn't wait for it to be dark. That evening, Hank got permission to visit Owen with Theodore again, and the two tugs set off out of the harbor. Do you think Northumberland will be there? said Hank. Probably, smiled Theodore. And maybe Constance can show me that big flipper again, Hank went on, already looking forward to all the fun he was going to have with everybody. Owen, Owen, Hank called. I'm back again. Good for you, Hank, hollered Owen. What story are you going to tell? said Hank. He settled in for a real rip-roar. Oh, no stories tonight, replied Owen. Heaps of work to do. Theodore moved into position to begin moving one of Owen's giant anchor cables. Try and stay out of the way, Hank, he called. Hank backed up right away. Careful, Hank. It was Northumberland. Hank had almost backed into the sub. He surprised me, smiled Hank, thinking Northumberland was playing his diving game with him again. Sure enough, the submarine disappeared under the water. Where are you, Northumberland? Giggled Hank. Northumberland, said Hank after a moment. Northumberland! He must have gone, said Hank, puzzled. Constance, he cried. I was waiting for you. Hank was very happy to see the Coast Guard. Everyone turn off your lights, he shouted, so we can see the sky. Sorry, not now, Hank, said Constance as she cruised past. I'm very busy tonight. Stay back there, little fella. Owen called down to Hank. These big cables can be dangerous. Hank watched everyone, busy at work. But suddenly, he did feel like a little fella. A little fella who didn't really belong out there. Hank was quiet as he floated back home to the big harbor with Theodore. 
Theodore? He said at last. Yes, Hank, said Theodore. The first time he went to visit Owen, that was really special, wasn't it? Oh, sure was, smiled Theodore. But tonight, Hank went on, no one really had time to do special things with me. Theodore was thoughtful for a moment. I guess we all had other things we had to do. And I really didn't, said Hank sadly. I was just visiting, and everyone else had jobs to do. Hank caught sight of Shediac, the shipyard shed. Suddenly, Hank smiled. There was one job he had to do, an important job. Theodore, he said. Yes, Hank. Would you mind if tomorrow I didn't go with you to visit Owen? I have some other things I really need to do. I think that would be fine, Hank, smiled Theodore. Early the next morning, all the tugboats were asleep. All the tugboats, that is, but one. Hank was up. Good morning, Shediac, Hank called to the shipyard shed. Morning, Hank, Shediac called back. I was hoping you'd come today. I've been visiting Owen and staying up late, Hank explained. Oh, that must be very special, said Shediac. It is, said Hank, once in a while, but visiting you is special all the time. Now let's get your bumpers unloaded. Aye, aye, Hank, said Shediac. Hank smiled. It was funny, but he always felt just a little bit bigger whenever he supplied the shipyard shed. You know, I've been thinking. If I slept in my office every night, it probably wouldn't seem so special. Well, just like if Hank visited Owen every night. But it's special now, and I'm going to enjoy it. I've got my cookies and my cocoa, and I've got my maps and my binoculars. Yeah, I'm all set for some fun now. Thanks for visiting us here in the Big Harbor, and we'll see you all again next time. Oh, now what should I do first? Oh, boy. Oh, I'm really going to enjoy this. I can hardly wait. Mm. Theodore. He's a tugboat and a friendly tugboat too. A friendly tugboat too. Oh, Theodore likes to do the things that friendly tugboats do. Pushing and a pulling in the great big harbor in the great big world is so much fun. So many brand new things to discover. Waking with the sun, gotta get the job done. Oh, Theodore and Emily. Oh, Hank and George and the harbor master too.